Islam, like a precious gem, has many beautiful facets. Explore with us now the facets of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm Yusuf Estes, your host on Facets of Islam. And today I would like to talk about one of the most important facets of all Islam, and that's the subject of God. Who is God? Where is God? How do we know that there is a God? Is there proof? I've often reflected from the Bible and more recently from the Quran about the teachings offered about the God, the God of the universe. In the Arabic language, he's called Allah. In the Hebrew language, we find a similar root, something referred to even now as Elah or El, an Aramaic Allah, and even in the Old Testament, we find reference to Yahweh. We find reference in the New Testament to Eloi and Eli. All of these can be related, related to the characteristics of the one true God. In Arabic, the word Allah comes from Elah. Elah means something worship. Anything you worship is an Elah. A rock, a stick, a stone, or a bone can be an Elah to somebody. A star, the moon, the sun, Whatever is worshipped is the Elah. The plural is Aleha, the gods. But when we use the word Allah, this is unique and it's special because everything in Arabic language has gender, such as the sun, the moon, trees, rocks, stones. Anytime you mention something, you're going to find it has gender with it. Even a fly has gender, she, an ant, she, the sun, the moon, all of the different things are going to have male or female gender attached to it. We don't say it when we refer to a law, and that's the only reason why Muslims use the word he when they speak of about a law. We don't say it. There isn't really a way to say it referring to Allah in Arabic. But the word Allah also has no gender. It's not male, it's not female. Another interesting thing about this word is it can't be made plural. I already showed you the plural of God, Aliha, gods. But Allah cannot have Allah's, for instance. It just doesn't work. There's only one. So the word itself means the only one to be worshipped. Not male, not female, never plural. This is the meaning of the word. Before I go any further, I already know there are going to be those who are going to say, hold on a second, I bought a Quran at the store the other day, or somebody gave me the Quran, and in the Quran, it clearly says, he, 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 over and over, he. It says right here, Hua, Hua means he says it. Well, as I just explained, we don't say it about a law. So we say he. Out of respect, dignity, honor for the only God to worship. Okay, but wait a minute. Another question. Hold on. It says we created the heavens and earth. Khalaqna, which means we created. It says we. Ah. Hmm, how do you deal with that? Well, actually it says in the Quran many times, we, our, us. So how do we uh, resolve that? How are we going to come up with an answer for this? Clearly plural, yes? No. As a matter of fact, this is called the royal we. Whenever a king or a queen decree a decree, they say we. This is well known. It's been established for centuries and centuries that the one who is the dictator or the main one in charge over everything, he uses this kind of statement, we, 
we declare the following. We. But he means me, myself, and I. Just me. In the same way Allah uses this royal we. It's found in English, it's found in Arabic, and it's also found in Hebrew. So that we don't misunderstand, I want you to know the word itself. Allah is the perfect name to use for the Almighty. Now some people might say, and I've heard it said, that Allah has nothing to do with the God of the Bible. That's incorrect. It's very incorrect. And the person saying this obviously has no knowledge of it. Because in fact you can verify what I just told you real easy by going to the Bible in any hotel or motel. The Bibles that are placed there are put there by a group called the Gideon Society. And the beginning of each one of their Bibles has a description of the languages that they have also translated the Bible to. The first language they give you the example of is called Afrikaans language. The second one is Arabic. And in the Arabic language, it gives you a sample of the Bible. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, real clear, the verse that everybody knows it, for God so loved the world. It's how it starts out. For God so loved the world. The word in Arabic is Allah. So if you know that the Arabs today that are Christians, and there are many Christian Arabs, if you know they say Allah, and Arabic is an ancient language, then you have to agree, hmm, there's some validity to what I'm saying. Also, if you go to the Jewish book in Arabic, and that would be for any Arabs who happen to be Jews, you can open it up, page one, and the word Allah in Genesis is there 17 times on the first page. Allah, 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 Allah. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. It's right there. You can read it. So if Arab Jews and if Arab Christians are using this word, Allah, and you understand the meaning of it, then why would you continue to use the word God? Because... The word God didn't exist at the time of any of the prophets. You see, the English language is where we get this word God from. And the English language didn't exist even a thousand years ago. It wasn't until the Normans invaded the Saxons and at that time implemented this language called Anglish for the Anglicans. And that's where it came from, this word, God. So nowhere in all the history of all the monotheistic religion will you find this word, God. But you will find this word, El, Elah, Allah, and Allah. And this was used by the prophets. Now that I've established the source of the word, let's talk about what it actually means and how we understand it. The concept of Allah in Islam is that God is one. He's unique. He has no partners. He existed before all other of the creation. He is the only creator. All that's created is created by him. And he's the only provider, the only sustainer of everything. Nothing exists except that he created. And nothing continues except that he allows it to continue. He has full and complete power, total control at all times of everything. In other facets of Islam programs that we've had, episodes, we've talked about this. We've even mentioned from the Quran his description of himself being the ever-living, self-subsisting, that he never needs to rest or sleep. All that's in the heavens and earth belongs to him. And that there's none that's going to come between him and his creation except that he has to give him permission. That he has full knowledge of everything that exists everywhere in the universe. And that you have no knowledge at all except the knowledge that he gives you. 
It even continues by saying he never gets weary from taking care of all of his creation. He's mighty, majestic, and powerful over all things. This is more or less a partial translation from ayah number 255 in chapter 2 of the Quran, Surah Baqarah, the cow. Many statements of Allah in the Quran indicate immediately that this is from the one and only creator of the universe. He tells us from the very beginning, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the all merciful, the all gracious, most merciful, most gracious, most benevolent. So many words we try to come up for that. We've spoken about his names in other episodes. But who is this Allah? And he's telling us he created everything. Now here's a question. Here's a good question for you. If Allah is the only creator and there isn't anything else that he didn't create, is Allah good? The answer is yes. It says so in the Quran. Is Allah ever bad? Out of Allah, of course not. Never. So then who created evil? Because if there's evil in the world and you said that God is the only creator, where did evil come from? Ah. There's a good question, and I'm going to let you think about it. Think about that one while we take a break. We're going to come back and give you the answer to that and some other questions about Allah in the next part of our episode, Facets of Islam. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum. We're back. This is Yusuf Estes, your host here on Facets of Islam. We've been talking about Allah, the God, the one and only. We've explained already the meaning of the word Allah and a little bit about the aspects or the facets here of his characteristics, his, his attributes. Then we came to a question when we went to break, and the question was, is God good? Yes, God is good. God is pure. Okay, great. Is there evil in the world? Yes, there is. Where did it come from? Did God put evil in the world? If so, is God evil? Oh, oh good question. <laughs> the answer is in the Quran. The answer is real clear. If you go through the 114 chapters of the Quran, you constantly see how Allah is telling you that he's the only God to worship, that he's all merciful. He is all loving. He's al Wadud, the loving God. He's pure, and he's good. But he also tells you where evil comes from. He tells you clearly. But I'll take you to one reference at the end, and then we'll go back to the beginning. The end of the Quran, chapter 113, next to the last, it goes something like this. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir rahim Kul a'udhu bi rabbil falaqa min sharima khalaqa. I'm going to stop right there because he gave you the answer. He's telling you to say, I seek refuge with the Lord of daybreak from the evil of that he created. The Lord of daybreak, of course, is Allah. He's the Lord of everything. But you say, I seek refuge with the Lord of daybreak from the evil of he created. Evil? was created by Allah. Whoa, hold on. Now let's go back to the second chapter of the Quran, go all the way back to number two, and look at verse 102. In the translation, it's going to tell you about two angels that God sent down to the people of Babylon. And he ordered the angels to warn the people about something they had called Seher magic so the angels told them we're coming with something here called magic sahar but don't use it this is the test don't use it it's bad and it's the kind of magic that can make a husband and wife separate and divorce it's the kind of magic that can make things happen in people's lives it's something here you got to be careful of don't use it and they taught him magic the two angels are called harut and marut and they're mentioned right there. Go look it up. Read it for yourself. Chapter 2, verse 102. 
Now, right away, you're going to say, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> and all the other episodes of Facets of Islam, you guys have been telling us over and over and over, there's only one God, he has all the power, there is no, none to worship but him, magic's not real, uh, superstition isn't for real, but now all of a sudden, here you've got, <laughs> in your book, in your, ah, what are you saying? We're saying that Allah sent down this as a test. It's not really, really magic. What it is, is something that Allah allows to happen. Because everything always happens by His permission. In one of our other episodes when we spoke about Qadr, we understood that there isn't anything that happens except by His permission. Totally and completely from Him. The life that we live in is a test. And He's put good things in this life and bad things in this life. And He's given us the choice without the evil, without these superstitions, magic and so on, then the choice wouldn't be the same, would it? Now let's come to the subject of prophets. Prophets have miracles. Oh, look, here's a prophet who threw a stick down, it became a snake. A prophet who hit the water, it split, and the people walked through the water. A prophet that had a rock that split open and a camel came out of it. Another prophet who brought the dead back to life. And another prophet who was able to cure the sick and the lame and make them be able to walk again. Somebody's blind and now they can see. Oh, oh, doesn't that mean these prophets, maybe they have some kind of powers with Allah? Huh? But in fact, that's not true. Every case that we find about these prophets mentioned in Quran says that they only did it by the permission of Allah. He let it happen. We call it mu'ajiza or a miracle. But really, it's from Allah, the Ibnilah, His permission. Anything that happens, happens by His permission. Have you ever heard Muslims talk? They say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Do you know what it means? It means because Allah willed for this to happen. Oh, somebody got a good job. MashaAllah, because Allah willed. Oh, somebody had a new baby today. Oh, MashaAllah, because Allah willed. Anytime you see anything, you say, MashaAllah. Somebody got sick. We say, mashallah, it's from Allah, but may Allah give them shifa, or the cure, because the cure also is only with Allah. We understand as Muslims, nothing happens except by the permission of Allah. One of the things we know in Islam that sometimes people could be praying and asking for something, and there was something horrible coming to right toward them, right toward them. But then Allah diverted it, and it went away, and they never had it happen. They didn't even know what it was. They didn't know it took place. So it's always important for us to keep asking Allah, turning to Allah, seeking refuge in Allah from the evil that He created and from the evil inside ourselves. Because every one of us has within us the capability to do evil. Oh yes, we all have that. It's so easy, isn't it? Oh, you don't know how mad I can get. You don't know how bad I can be. Have you heard people say things like that? You just don't know how bad I can be. That's not too smart, is it? I don't hear people say too often, you don't know how good I can be. Oh, I can be better than this. Well, do it. <laughs> let's do that. Let's focus, really, you and I, let's focus on seeing how good we can be instead of how evil. Whoever does anything good for the sake of God, for Allah, he knows that, and it's recorded, and it's with him. Don't worry about that. But whoever does any evil and he doesn't repent from that, he's going to have to answer for that on the Day of Judgment. Because in the final analysis, everything is going to be judged only by Allah. He tells us in the Quran about those people who come to the right belief and they do the good deeds. And he tells us that the reward is with them, the ajr will be with them, and they'll find it on the Day of Judgment. It's going to be there waiting for them. And he says that he's the one going to be there for that judgment. And he asks us, salahu Isn't Allah the best of all the judges? Ah. And he tells us in the Quran, Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un. 
that from Allah you came, and to Allah is the return. And that doesn't mean that you came out of Allah, and you're going into Allah. It means you were in front of Allah in the beginning, and you're going to be back in front of him again at the end. He asked all of us when we were in the backbone of Adam, he asked us, am I not your Lord? And we all said yes. Then he made us to forget that. We don't have any memory of it. In Arabic, we're called insan, which means from the same root as the word nasiya. Ana nasiya, I forgot. The one that's created to forget, the human, insan, has forgotten that he's been in front of his Lord, and he forgets that he's going to be in front of his Lord again. And throughout the Quran, Allah tells us over and over, azkar Allah, azkar. Zikr of Allah. Remember Allah. La tansa. Zikr Allah. Don't forget to remember Allah. Remind each other about Allah. Tawasso. Encourage and exhort each other to remember the haq of Allah. Remember. Think. Realize. Allah is reminding you and telling you to remind each other. Think about Allah. Be afraid of Allah. How are you stealing when you know Allah is watching you? How are you cheating and you know he's listening to every word you're saying? How is it that you could go out here and commit these sins? Adultery, drinking, smoking, cheating, lying, killing. How can you do all of these things knowing you're in the presence of Almighty God? How? And Allah is as close to you as your juggler vein. But he's never in his creation. He comes in the last part of the night to take the prayers of the believers, but still he's not like his creation. We don't compare him to the creation. He's not like anything. He says, Wallam yakullahu kufu wan ahad. And there is nothing like unto him anywhere, any time, any place, and he is unique. Ahad. 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 And this is the word which means uniquely one in Arabic. And if you believe that Allah is uniquely one and that he's the only God and you believe that you need to turn to him, then do it now. Do it before it's too late. Nobody knows how long you're going to live. And only Allah lives forever. This is one of the most important facets of Islam. Allah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته